Welcome back, guys, to another session of study to show thyself approved. Today, we will be studying scriptures that speak to music, worship, and praise. So much of the gospel music that we hear today is not scripturally based, and some is not based upon truth. When we sing and worship to the scriptures, there really is no chance of idolatry creeping into our worship. I want to study these scriptures so that we will know exactly what to look for when songs are played and understand the words that we should hear in lyrics when we sing unto the Lord. Let's pray before we get started. Lord, I thank you for being an awesome God. You are so wonderful and glorious. Thank you for the gift of music and the effect that it has on our spirit. Music feeds the soul. And we want to have a clear understanding of the importance of listening to the right type of gospel music because there are so many imitations today. Fine tune our hearing, Holy Spirit, as we study how your children praise you in scripture. Help us to rightly divide gospel music today so that we can have a closer walk with you and not with man. Do not let us idolize ourselves in music. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, because your word says, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Give us more discernment, more revelation, and more knowledge as we study today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As I mentioned, this study session will be based upon scriptures that guide us in praise and worship. Today's gospel music is not what it used to be. Before God took me out of the physical church and off of the pew, I remember sitting in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, wondering, what am I doing here? I really didn't enjoy the music anymore or the atmosphere. My father was a musician, and he always warned me and my sisters about music. He said to stay away from musicians. At the time, I didn't understand why he said that, But I was like, okay. I thought this was odd because he played in a gospel music group. He also said that Satan was the master musician and that music is a performance. You have to look for God in the performance. Otherwise, it's just people on stage entertaining you in church. So as I moved around as an adult from church to church, I always took his teachings with me. As I sat in church Sunday after Sunday, I didn't feel like I was learning anything new from the overseer. It was like the pastor was entertaining us as well. But there is also Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, that was looming over my head, which says in the New Living Translation, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So I knew that it was important to maintain a connection to other people of like faith. However, going to a physical church building every Sunday was a total waste of my time, and God knew that. I remember asking God, what is church all about now? Because I don't fit in here. I'm looking for you, and I can't find you. The music has taken a drastic turn. It was no longer God-focused. It changed into songs that made the congregants feel good. Songs that uplifted our spirits to get us through the day. But I don't remember hearing Jesus' name. There were key words that were missing from the songs, and the movements in church didn't feel right. The songs were okay, but they were not God-built songs of praise and worship, and my spirit could tell. I was slowly dying a spiritual death in the church. So I found myself always referring back to the artists that I listened to as a child, such as Dorothy Norwood, Reverend Timothy Wright, Andre Crouch, the Clark Sisters, and groups like the Mississippi Mass Choir. I always remember those songs of praise and worship in the church being scriptures put into the form of song or just truth, biblical truth. That is actually how I learned the scriptures at a very young age. Songs like Reverend Timothy writes, You Must Come In at the Door.
this entire song is based upon scripture and truth. John chapter 10 verses 7 through 9 says, So Jesus said again, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I am a door for the sheep leading to life. All who came before me as false messiahs and self-appointed leaders are thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever and will go in and out freely and find pasture spiritually secure. Andre Crouch's song, The Sweet Love of Jesus, is a song about how much Jesus loved us. He sacrificed his life for us. Matthew chapter 27 discusses how Jesus loved us so much that he died on the cross for our sins. So again, spiritual truth is in that song. There aren't many gospel artists today that focus their songs on scripture and truth. Some of the gospel legends who started off singing the scriptures have focused their lyrics in a different direction. Music is very instrumental in our daily walk with God, and we will study this in 1 Samuel to understand the impact music has on our soul. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23, where David was in Saul's service. We'll look at the King James Version. And it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. I want to look closer at this scripture because, <clears throat> excuse me, I hear many people say that God would never do this and God would never do that. But this scripture says that an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So I want to understand how the Hebrew translation expounds upon this. So the phrase, but the spirit in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H7307. And it says, Spirit of God, the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. It also says prophetic spirit and spirit as the seat of emotion, desire, and the seat of mental acts. Seat especially of moral character. So there are a lot of emotions in this spirit. And this is the spirit of God. The phrase of the Lord in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H3068. And it says the proper name of the one true God, Jehovah, which is the existing one. Evil in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H7451. And it says bad, unpleasant. Worse than, sad, unhappy, wicked, and unkind. Spirit in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H7307, which also refers back to the phrase, but the spirit that we defined earlier in this scripture. And it says, spirit of God and the seat of mental acts, rarely of the will Seat, especially of moral character, unaccountable or uncontrollable impulse. From in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H854 and it says near of place, together, with, among. The phrase the Lord in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H3608 and this entry also refers back to the phrase of the Lord, which we defined earlier, which says the proper name of the one true God, Jehovah, which is the existing one. The phrase troubled him in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H1204, and it says to terrify, startle, this may be overtaken by sudden terror. So as we just studied this scripture, we see here that Jehovah the one true God, his spirit departed or left Saul, and an unpleasant, worse, wicked spirit among, near the place of, or together with Jehovah, the one true God, terrified Saul. 
which means a wicked spirit that was near the place of God, or it was among or by God troubled Saul. I believe this reads properly because God created everything. God created Satan. So if Satan is busy in the life of someone, it means that because God created Satan, and when God removed his spirit from Saul, that left the door open for a wicked spirit near where God was to attack Saul. Can a wicked spirit be near God? I've heard that question asked. And it's absolutely yes. Because in Job chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, it says this in the Amplified Version. Now there was a day when the sons of God, which are the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, who is the accuser, also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? So Satan is an evil, wicked spirit, and he is standing before God, and God is speaking to him. Then Satan answered the Lord, from roaming around on the earth and from walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered and reflected on my servant Job? For there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God with reverence and abstains from and turns away from evil because he honors God. So based upon these scriptures in Job, I can see clearly that evil spirits can be in the presence of God, near God, among God, and so on and so forth, as the scripture was translated. So let's continue on with verses 15 through 18. First Samuel chapter 16, verses 15 says, And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. Merriam Webster describes the word cunning as crafty in the use of special resources, such as skill or knowledge. And the scripture goes on to say, It shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning and playing and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person and the Lord is with him. Now let's skip to verse 22 through 23. And it says, And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So based upon these scriptures, we see that the evil spirits exist and they torment the soul. We also read where Saul's servants understood the impact of music. So they explained to Saul how this wicked spirit would leave him if he had a cunning heart player that played well. So the criteria for effective music that delivers your soul from evil is there should be a musical instrument. And a good example of this instrument is a harp, is meant to soothe the soul and also someone anointed to play that instrument. And they should be able to play it cunningly and very well so that the evil spirit will leave. For some reason today, people don't believe that music has an impact on our children. They do not believe that rap, rap music influences our children. However, we see here that Saul was a grown man. He was king. And based upon the influential harp music played by David, his soul was soothed. So why don't most people believe that music can be influential positively or negatively? Because they have not studied the Bible and it's the enemy's job to deceive people. That's why gospel music is so important 
and instrumental in our walk with God because music soothes the soul. Music can deliver you from torment. Music can rejuvenate your mind and cause you to see things differently when you were on the brink of destruction. Musical instruments and lyrics in the hand of the right psalmist can be life-changing, but we have to be able to identify if this music in the hands of the right person is being used properly. Look at this clip. Based upon this clip, it can be difficult for some people to discern whether this is godly praise or worldly praise. The dance moves look like a dance that was created by the world called the cha-cha slide. However, you hear people in church saying hallelujah and praise the Lord when giving God praise. Because this is a familiar worldly dance to me, this praise and worship session appears to be filled with mixture. And it does not seem like something inspired by God. It does not appear to be holy because God is an originator. However, the younger generation who is not aware of the cha-cha slide, this may seem like authentic praise and worship because of the words being used. How do you divide this situation righteously? Sometimes you can't because God said that in the last days, even the very elect will be deceived. This is when the comforter, Holy Spirit, is required to guide us because Holy Spirit advises us based upon things that we cannot see. You know how you will receive a feeling about something? You don't know why you feel that way, but you feel it and you know that your feelings are correct? That's Holy Spirit functioning your spirit in the right direction. When I left the physical building of the church because of mixture and all of the unnecessary noise that goes along with it, I was finally able to hear God clearly. Holy Spirit was able to explain to me the most gospel music is no longer about God, but it has shifted to being about man worshiping himself, man making himself feel good and using good words and lyrics. However, you will notice that the words God and Jesus are not really mentioned. There is a false feeling of worship, but worship is not to God. His focus is on man getting through the day, encouraging man through hard times, making sure man knows that he is going to be blessed. Gospel music has been elevated above scripture and above God in the church. Music and worship has three purposes. Codify, unify, glorify. That gets the gist. That the purpose of music in the worship of God is to codify the truth so that it can be sung to the glory of God down through the generations. That clip was spot on because I remember when I was a child, gospel music was actual scriptures and truth turned into a song. That is how I learned certain scriptures from the Bible because it was incorporated into a song. There is power in the word of God and there is power when we speak the word of God. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 31 through 32, it says, So the devil besought him, who is Jesus, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. So here we see that evil spirits hearkened into the voice of the Lord Jesus. David sang a psalm of rescue in 2 Samuel chapter 22. David spoke the words of that psalm to the Lord when the Lord rescued him from the hands of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. 
Second Samuel chapter 22 is an extensive song of praise and worship to God, who was David's deliverer in the time of trouble. So I encourage you to read and study the entire chapter of Second Samuel chapter 22. You find people in scripture worshiping God because he is good. Psalms chapter 136 is an antiphonal psalm intended to be sung by two choirs or by a soloist in the temple choir. This avowal of the eternity of God's mercy amid all the fluctuation and change of human affairs speaks to how his mercy endureth forever. And I encourage you all to read Psalms chapter 136 as well. If you read the book of Psalms, you will notice that the entire book is about singing and uplifting God. David loved God with all of his heart, so he focused his music towards him. Most of today's gospel music has shifted from the focus being on God. Just listen to the words. As the scripture says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, In everything give thanks. Give thanks to who? Thanks to God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. The book of Psalms has 150 chapters. And Merriam-Webster defines a psalm as a sacred song or poem used in worship. These songs and poems guide us as a roadmap to worship and praise. They point us to the world of blessedness. They also express God's pride in his people. When God says, this people have I made for myself, said the Most High, that they might show forth my praise, is it not also our Christian duty? to be joyful in our King. Psalms chapter 150 in the Amplified Version says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to abundance of his greatness. Praise him with triumph, sound. Praise him with harp and lyra. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise him with astounding and resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Let everything that has breath and every breath of life praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. These songs and poems unify the body of Christ because the congregation uplifts God through singing and worship based upon his word and truth. We know that music is a teaching tool that has been used to teach children for years. That's why we sing the alphabet song. and That's why we sing lullabies to our children at night. These songs get down into the soul of a person and it causes them to remember. And when you remember, you can speak it out of your mouth. When we come together on one accord, singing unto the glory of God, we are unified in our stance against the enemy. What then happens is that the enemy has no power over us. Psalms chapter 103 verse 20 says in the Amplified Version, Bless the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his commandments, obeying the voice of his word. So if the angels obey the voice of God's word, According to Psalms chapter 103, verse 20, when we speak God's word, which are the scriptures, the angels should also hearken unto God's word as we speak, because we know that the Bible is the inspired word of God. That's another benefit to incorporating scriptures into song. Angels respond to the word of God. So if Satan can deceive man into removing scriptures and truth, from gospel music for the next generation. The next generation will have a difficult time knowing what true worship and praise is unto God, and they don't know what it looks like or what it feels like. They don't understand the power of the words of the scriptures in music, and they won't have the advantage of learning scripture and truth. They will be accustomed to empty words and musical instruments that are not played by those who are cunning like David, who had the power to remove evil spirits. They will become accustomed to a false presence of God. And we see this happening today. 
That's why I don't listen to all gospel music. Just because someone records a song and calls it gospel music does not mean the song came from the Spirit of God. If you are not reading your Bible and studying God's Word, you won't be able to determine which music is truly from God and what is from Satan. This is why I consider the book of Psalms to be the master book of worship and praise unto God, because the book of Psalms is a collection of poems that were originally set to music and sung in worship to God. It is the blueprint. However, all scripture is truth, and the proper psalmist can turn scripture into song as well. Holy Spirit can speak to us and give us a scripture or a truth to sing to God. Turn on your listening ear to hear the word of the Lord in music. If you don't hear them uplifting the name of the Lord, what is being uplifted? Satan wants you to worship music or anything but God. Listen with a critical ear from this point forward to identify the true psalmists and worshipers of God. Spend time reading the word of God and ask Holy Spirit to give you a song in your spirit. I had to be removed from the church and removed from sitting on the pew so that I could hear God clearly. Not all churches have mixture, but a lot of them do. As long as we stay close to God by studying his word, we will rightly divide truth from lies and deception. Amen. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. You could have tuned into any other channel, but you chose to spend your time with me today, so I appreciate you. I pray that this study session was helpful and blessed your spirit. If this video was helpful to you, please like it. Share it with someone else who you believe will benefit from this study session. And if you enjoy these study sessions, subscribe to my channel. Until next time, God bless you and your family. And may God's peace be with you.